Stay all day, W. Being tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. What is that? That is a go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. Then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques, all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is everybody is a buyer. Yes, everybody is a buyer. Oh, you didn't think everybody was a buyer? Good, because I'm going to change your mind here today. Keep thinking that because you're going to think different by the time this master class is over. Now, before we get into this, first of all, I send out a motivational text message daily, weekly, or somewhere in between. It's up in the air right now, but I'm going to be sending out at least once a week to everyone who's in my text community. If you have to receive this message guaranteed to keep you focused, sharp, and on point, yes, you do. All you got to do is text me at my number, which is 305-384-6894. And every time I send that message out, you will be receiving it. And we'll figure out exactly what the schedule is going to be soon. And maybe by the time you hear this, we'll probably have already figured it out. But I record these you know, far in advance. But as I told you, they changed up the plans on us when it comes to sending text messages out simply because of the spammers and all that. The spammers are the, the reason for this. The reason why we have to stop doing it daily, at least for now, is because of the spammers. So they raise the price on everybody to try to block the spammers out. But we'll see how things go in the future. But text me either way. And then the other thing is go to workonyourgame.net so you get access to my free training, how to go from the six to the seven figure level without running yourself into the pavement in the process. Even if you feel like you're running yourself into the pavement right now to be at the six figure level, here's how you can, there's a way that you can get to the next financial level without killing yourself anymore, even if you feel like you're already doing it. That is at workonyourgame.net. Now let's get into today's topic. Speaking of such, everybody's a buyer. Now, I walked into a soup supply store in uh, downtown Miami one, the one day a week when, if you're watching this on video and some of you, you've seen me on social media or anything like that, you know that I wear uh, business suits almost every day. So this is one day a week that I did not have a suit on. So I went into the soup supply store. I was actually taking a, a walk on this day. It was on a Sunday. No suit on. I had on a, no basketball shorts, white t-shirt, no basketball sneakers, things like that. I walk into this store, and I had seen this store many times before, but every time I saw it, usually when I walk by this particular place, it's so early in the morning that the store is not open. But this particular day, I didn't take my walk till it was like later in the day. It was like 11 o'clock in the morning. The store was actually open, so I go in. So let me see what's going on in here. I might, I might see some suits in here. Maybe in the future I might get a suit. Maybe if somebody sold me something, I might have bought a suit right there on the spot. So I walk in the store, there are about 10 people working. This is a nice size store. There are about 10 people in there working. This is on a Sunday morning. And they're active. Everybody's you no know, moving around. People look nice and there's a suit store, so everybody's dressed pretty nicely. And I was mostly ignored by the workers in there. Now there was one person in there who approached me when I had first walked in, maybe I had been in there for a minute or so. When I walked in, somebody you know, greeted me, hey, how you doing? I say, how you doing? I walked around, nobody else said anything. And one guy came and approached me. He recognized me from my basketball videos back in the day on YouTube. He was one of the staff members. He came over, shook my hand, like, man, it's crazy to finally meet you, man. I used to watch your videos. You used to do the dribbling drills, et cetera, et cetera. And he tells me all that. We talk for about two minutes. And then he says, well, uh, great to finally meet you, man. And he turns and he walks away. He never actually tried to sell me anything. He never even asked me, what are you doing in the suit store? <laughs> he never asked me. And I'm in the suit store. He works there. But anyway, this happened. This is all a true story. So they mostly ignored me while I'm in the store. Fine, if that's what they want to do. Now, I would guess that in this kind of store and the kind of products that they were selling and with the number of people they had in there actively working, that these workers are probably on commission. I would bet that the way that business is run, that they wouldn't have all these people working and paying them by the hour if they weren't paying them on commission. That most of them are in there, their very mission in being there, not commission, but mission, is to sell stuff because everything you sell, you get a percentage of and it goes onto your paycheck. And they're selling, the stuff they're selling is not cheap. A suit, a nice suit's gonna cost you a good $500 at probably at minimum, a nice quality type suit. And that's the stuff they were selling. The stuff in there was $500 and up. So get a, a couple of dollars of uh, commission off of that. Got a few of those add up. That's a, it, it will add significantly to your paycheck uh, based on uh, whatever they're getting as a base salary, I would guess. And I've worked these kind of jobs before, so I have a good idea. This. I have no idea if they're technically in commission, but I would guess that they were. The whole point is, these people didn't even try to you know, talk me up, ask me, hey, what's your suit size? 
you know, what what brings you into a suit store? You know, what do you do for a living? You know, what why do why would you come in here? Why'd you stumble into here? I guess maybe because they just sized me up and saw me not wearing a suit, saw the you know the casual act uh, casual gear that I had on, and just figured that I'm not the person to buy a suit or wear a suit. No, little did they know. And the whole point is they lost money and opportunity there. Because even if I hadn't bought anything that day, if they had treated me like a buyer and shown me some stuff and said, hey, you might like this. How about you take a look at this? What do you think about this fabric? I might have at least said, all right, they showed me some stuff that made me want to come back here and take a second look. Or maybe I would have taken a liking to one of the salesperson if they had any skill. And I would have said, all right, give me your card. Give me your number. So if I do come back here, I'll make sure I come and buy from you so you can get the commission. I would have done that because I'm a salesperson. And I... I game recognizes game. I will make sure I respect the salesperson who does a good job. Even if they don't sell me something the first time, if I do buy something, I'll come back and make sure I buy it from them so they can get the credit. But let's talk about the mindset that the salespeople would have if they understood what I'm going to explain to you here today. So any of you who's a salesperson, and by the way, that's a tongue in cheek point because everybody is a salesperson. Everybody is selling something. So if you believe you are not a salesperson, I'm telling you that you're wrong. You are a salesperson. You're just a bad salesperson. If you think you're not selling anything, you are always selling something. So you should get into the mindset that you are a salesperson. And when you're a salesperson, guess what? Everybody you talk to is a buyer. That's today's topic. Everybody is a buyer. Let's get into it. Point number one. Everyone is a buyer until or unless they give you a clear reason why they are not. And as a matter of fact, when someone gives you a clear reason why they are not a buyer, that doesn't necessarily mean that that, won't, that reason will not change, go away, or morph in some way, shape, or form in the future. Somebody tells you they're not a buyer right now, doesn't mean they won't be a buyer tomorrow. You know, some people come through a sales funnel for one of my books, like The Third Day or The Mirror of Motivation or Overseas Basketball Blueprint, and they do not buy the book. They put their information and they put their name, email, the phone number as if they plan to get the book, and then when it's time for them to actually you know, complete the, the order to get the book, they don't do it. We had an email address and phone number. I see, I can look at it right, or, right here on my computer. I can see everyone who's come through and they have intended to get the book, but they don't actually compete the, complete the transaction to get the book. I know who they are. Doesn't mean they won't come back and get it. A lot of books that we ship out are sold to people who did not get it the first time that they saw it, but they came back later because we have a follow-up process and ended up getting the book. The whole point is everybody's a buyer. All right, why? Because you're a salesperson. When you're a hammer, everything's a nail. All right, when you're a salesperson, everybody's a customer. All right, that doesn't mean you need to be obnoxious about it. it. Does not mean you shove your products down people's throats, and it doesn't mean that anything's wrong with them or you if they don't buy in the moment when you make your offer. Like, I make offers to people all the time that they do not buy at least the first time that they see it. And depending on what you're selling and the price of it and what expectations people have before they came to the conversation, they might not be in a position to buy, depending on what you're selling. Again, if you're selling a, a $5 widget, then it might be easy for someone to make a buying decision. But if you're selling something that costs $5,000, somebody might need to plan for that and think about it before they make the decision. doesn't mean they won't buy it. So this is the mindset of a salesperson. It does mean that you treat everyone as if they could possibly buy from you and never ever as a salesperson do you treat someone as if they can't buy unless you have a real reason to believe that they can't or won't buy. Now if you have a reason to believe this person is technically not a customer for you then you can say okay all right we're good and not really give this person uh, too much attention even if they may be asking for it. So I for example have a coaching program. I know what the investment is for my coaching program and I know what type of person I want to work with in my coaching program it does, and I do not accept everybody into my program and I know where somebody needs to be business wise and career wise if they're even eligible to work with me so there are people who sometimes will come through a, a funnel of mine or something like that and try to schedule a call with me that's about a business coaching program and I'll cancel the call I will look at their application and say this person is not a candidate for what I'm offering and I will cancel the call and I will let them know look I appreciate you signing up for the call, but looking at your application, you are not a candidate for what we want and we're not gonna have this call. And I'll let them know directly. And there are people listening to me right now who know, I have let you know, like we're not getting on the call because you're not eligible for what I'm offering. But depending on what I'm offering, there are some items that I will treat everybody as if they can possibly buy it. Like if I'm thinking you can get one of these books or pay $9.95 shipping, anybody can do that. But there are different things where you have to have different levels of uh, discernment, let's just say. So you got to know what your product is and you also got to know uh, who you're offering it to and uh, what, is your, what are your parameters for who you're even going to make the offer to. And depending on your higher level stuff, your higher ticket stuff, you should have some parameters in place as opposed to, let's say, a book or some cheap widget. You probably will sell that to anybody who wants it. 
treat everybody as if they could buy from you until or unless you have a reason why you would treat them otherwise. When you're selling something where the price is unknown by the prospect, again, such as consulting or speaking gig or coaching, then you have to make value judgments about the people you're talking to and whether or not they're in a position to buy what you're selling and also whether you are in a position to want to deal with them because these are more uh, more intimate things. See, if you want to buy a book from me, that's fine. I'll put it in, we put it in an envelope, ship it to you. You and I never had to have any real direct engagement. But if I'm going to coach you, you're going to be in my coaching program. That means I have to deal with you. I have to talk to you. I have to answer your questions. We're going to have direct conversations. And I want to have that kind of interaction with everybody. All right, I had to be discerning about that. Everybody ain't getting it because I don't want to coach everybody. I don't want to deal with everybody. I don't want to answer everybody's questions. There are certain people who I want to work with and I have a good feel for who I want to work with and who I don't want to work with. That's a personality thing. It's a business thing. It's a status thing. It's a where are you right now thing. It's a what are your challenges thing. It's a how you're presenting yourself thing. All of those things go into my decision making process and I make the call because of my program. And any of you who's doing something similar, you need to be doing things the same way. You need to be discerning about who you are working with if you're offering something that's more on a more uh, intimate level, especially when it's a higher investment, because now that person's gonna be higher invested, which means you're gonna be dealing with them a lot more. So think about that. <clears throat> That'd probably be a different conversation for a different episode of this show to, uh, to be coming in the future, let's just put it that way. Anyway. When you are selling something that, again, is a higher investment, you got to make value judgments as to who you're going to deal with because you know the price. They don't know the price. So before you even get to the point that you're even talking about that, you got to decide, do I even want to offer it to this person? Because they just might say yes. So you don't want to be offering something to somebody that you hope they say no to and they say yes, because now you're in. But when you're selling things at retail, for example, like books or suits, where all the prices are clear, the price tags on everything, and it's obvious to everyone what the price is, you need to treat everybody like a potential customer. Why would you not? Especially when you're on commission. Right, if you're an entrepreneur, by the way, you're on commission. All right, you're on 100% commission. Meaning, if you don't make any, if you don't create any transactions and exchanges, you make no money, entrepreneur. Do you know that? Is any entrepreneur here who didn't know that? That if no transactions happen in your business, that you don't make any money? Okay, all y'all know that, right? Okay, so entrepreneur, every single person you deal with, you need to treat them as if they are a buyer for what you're selling. And those of you who work at a company and you're on commission, you need to treat every person who comes through that company as if they can buy from you. I used to work at a gym and I remember we were on commission. This was the last place I worked in Philadelphia before I moved to South Florida. And in this gym, we had a base pay. I forget how much it was. I think the base pay was like, man, it was maybe like uh, $240 a week, $250 a week, something like that. And then we got commission on every sale. And the way the commission structure was, I believe it was $60 per membership sale. So the membership itself was maybe 70 or $80 a month, something like that. But every time somebody signed up for a membership, my commission on that sale was $60. So I could calculate how much my check would be based on how many memberships I sold. Therefore, knowing that the bulk of my money was in my ability to pay my rent and keep my phone turned on and keep gas in my car was based on how much, how many memberships I sold. Guess how I treated every prospect who I stood in front of, whether they looked, smelled, or acted like they wanted to buy a gym membership or not. I treated all of them as if they would. Why? Because my business was based around them buying memberships. I needed to sell those memberships. So I treated everybody like they would. And there were many times there were people who I, could have prejudged and said, oh, this person ain't buying nothing. They actually did buy something. And I made sure I checked myself on that because I'm in the business of selling memberships. That was my business at that time. So I shouldn't have to explain this to any of you who are salespeople, especially when your paycheck is dependent on creating and serving customers. Point number two. And actually, by the way, all of you are salespeople. So I shouldn't have to explain this to anybody, actually. But I'm making this episode, so that tells me where the problem is. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is everyone is a buyer. Point number two. This is the owner versus the employee mindset. That's what really this is about. I work with a lot of business owners and many of them understand this concept, what I'm talking about here today. Those of you who do not understand this, if you're a business owner, uh, you better start understanding it as quickly as possible because every minute that you're not understanding it is costing you money. You might not even know it, but it is costing you money. Business owners, we all understand that we need to treat every person that we deal with like a buyer because our business's future depends on generating, serving, and nurturing buyers. 
when we run out of buyers, then eventually we're going to run out of business. Had the owner of the suit store, the suit store that I walked in this day in, in Miami where nobody acknowledged me or tried to sell me anything. If the owner had been in the store that day, and I could tell by the demeanor of the staff who was in there that none of them was the owner. If the owner had been in there, he would have sized me up and he would have noticed a few things about me that the workers did not notice, or at least they didn't try to notice, or at least they didn't act on if they did notice. So here's some things they would have noticed about me that the, here's the thing the owner would have noticed about me it, that if any of the salesperson was a real salesperson, they would have noticed as well. They would have noticed that uh, the way I was dressed and the way that I had um, walked into the store, that maybe I'm a resident of the neighborhood in which the store exists, which I am, and this neighborhood ain't cheap to live in, which means anyone who's walking around this neighborhood as a resident, they're spending a good amount of money to live here, which means they might spend a good amount of money on my products and services on top of the fact that they walked into my store. Maybe they would have noticed I had on some retro Jordan sneakers. And I don't know if any of you know anything about retro Jordan sneakers, but they are not cheap. Uh, the Jordans that I had on my feet cost about the same amount, if not more, than a bunch of the suits that they had on the rack in that store. This is a true story. Right, these, those were not cheap sneakers that I had on my feet. And even if you don't know the suit game, you might know the sneaker game, those were not cheap sneakers. And somebody, a salesperson, would notice that, especially if you're working in the clothing industry, you should notice, you should know, you should have a good idea of what kind of stuff people have on their bodies when they walk into your store. So it'll give you a good feel for maybe what their tastes are and what they might spend money on. Maybe, because they sold shoes in the store as well. Maybe a good salesperson or the owner would have noticed that I had walked into a suit store on my own volition, which might mean, I mean, it might mean, y'all tell me if I'm crazy to assume this, that if a person walks into a suit store that they might be interested in buying a damn suit. And maybe they would have done something as simple as engaging me in conversation to find out if I was a possible buyer or not, like asking me something like, sir, hey, what's your suit size? Just assuming that I knew the answer. And if I gave them an answer, and my answer is I wear a 40 long, it's my suit size, if I would have said that, what does that tell you? Well, how does a man know his suit size? Oh, it might be because he bought a suit before. And if I didn't know, then they could have went in a different direction and maybe tried to uh, find out, okay, this guy doesn't know his suit size, maybe he's never bought a suit before, but why do he walk in the suit store if he never bought a suit before? Maybe he's thinking about buying one. Maybe he needs to go to a funeral. Maybe he's going to a wedding. Maybe he's going to a job interview. Maybe he's decided to start wearing suits. Maybe he's not doing any of those. He just wants to find out what's going on. But if I treat him as if he might buy something, then guess what? He might buy something because look what's on his feet. He bought those, he might buy a suit. If somebody was a salesperson, they would have been thinking these things. But since they had 10 people working and none of them was a salesperson, none of this took place. Now, why am I so sure that the owner of the store would have done all these things that I just said? I'm sure of that because I know what an owner must do in order to be an owner. Because I know that the owner knows how much it's costing him or her every single day to even run that store. In other words, they know how much they're paying for the electricity, how much they're paying for the water, how much they're paying for the rent, how much they're paying every employee who's walking around there doing nothing and letting customers walk out the door like they did that day. I know that the owner knows all those things. The employees, they don't care about any of that because for the employees, none of this affects their bottom line. Employees get paid their salary whether they do the work or not. Now again, they, might, they were on commission. I would bet most of these people were on commission. There was too many people in there for them to be paying them by the hour. Being that they were on commission, that's why I can say that none of these people was a real salesperson. Because if I'm on commission, every single person who walks in, I'm treating them like a buyer because I need you to be a buyer because that's my business. The employees there, they got paid no matter what. I mean, I mean, minus the commission that they lost out on. If the company goes out of business, this particular company goes out of business from a lack of sales, well, what do the employees do? Well, first of all, what does the business owner do? Business owners who are listening to me right now. If your business goes out of business because your company is not making enough sales, what happens? All right, you got to pick up the pieces from all of that. But if your business goes out of business from a lack of sales, what do your employees do? Right, they say, oh, man, it's tough that that business went out of business, but what they do is go get a job somewhere else. See, this is the difference in mindset. And this is why, as business owners, we had to keep our feet in the asses of the people who work for us, metaphorically speaking, of course, because they don't have the same mentality about your business that you have about it. All right, because if you go out of business, they just go get another job. If you go out of business, though, you don't just go get another job. You got to figure all that out and you got to figure out why it happened. Point number three, today's topic, once again, is everyone is a buyer. Number three, you must be an opportunist. What is an opportunist? An opportunist is a person who seeks and or creates an opportunity in every situation. 
Every person you meet, salesperson, every text message you send or receive, every email, every direct message is an opportunity for business until it shows itself clearly that it is not. That's the opportunist mindset when you are a salesperson. Everything is a potential for a sale. And understand that potential for a sale does not mean you need to make a sale right there in the moment. Sometimes it's just marketing. What is marketing? Marketing is a nurturing of a relationship that can eventually lead to a conversation that could eventually lead to a sale. I'll tell you something. A lot of my coaching clients, the people who uh, work with me in my coaching programs, many of them listen to this show before they become coaching clients. And many of them listen to several episodes of this show. I'm talking months and years worth of this show before they ever even make themselves known to me that they exist. Then we have a conversation and then they become clients. A bunch of people who are current clients of mine right now listen to several episodes of this show before they even ever did made any type of communication with me. So every episode of this show is marketing. It's nurturing. What marketing means is not I'm trying to sell you something. Marketing means is the nurturing of the relationship between me and the person who is listening. And I don't even know who the person is, but they know who I am. So this means they're paying attention. They're listening to what I'm saying and they're taking in what I'm saying and they're, they're gauging. They're sizing me up and saying, all right, let me hear what this guy's saying. Let me hear what he says about this. Let me hear what he says about that. Let me see if he's consistent. Let me see if he can be good in the next episode like he was in the last episode. All of this is part of the marketing. And I understand that, that this is a big part of my business is the nurturing of the relationship. Because most people, when they're presented with an opportunity to take action on something, most of us do not take action the first time we see something. All right? Look at yourself. You got probably got a whole bunch of things that you will eventually take action on that you know about right now, but you're not going to take the action right now. You're probably not going to take it today, not even this week, maybe not even this month or this year, but you will eventually take action on it. It's just something that you just kind of put to the side and you'll eventually get to it. And people are treating you the exact same way. So the continual communication is the marketing. That's marketing. Marketing is the communication and the nurturing and the building of a relationship between you and your audience, which can eventually lead to a transaction. All right, marketing does not mean somebody has to buy something. Marketing is just the nurturing of the relationship. So this is why I got a show that comes out every day. All right, it's showing you several things. It's showing you my consistency. It's showing you that all right, my message is my message is consistent. It's showing you that I can talk about a lot of different things. I'm letting you know my style of communication. By the time these people who I'm talking about who listen to my show several times before they get into my coaching program, you already got a good feel of you know, how I communicate. You already got a good feel of what my principles are about. You already got a good feel of the, the way I address things. You already know. This is why I send out emails so often. How many of you get emails from me? How many times a week do you get an email from me? Four, three, four, five, six times a week. All right. This is the reason why I do that. This is, if you follow me on social media, how often am I posting on social? I'm not telling you that you have to do this. Right? I'm not telling you, you got to be like me. I just like using these platforms the way that I like using them because I'm a, a creative individual. I'm a writer. I'm a speaker. These are things that I like to do. But the reason I'm pointing these things out is to help you understand that all of this is part of the marketing, even though in my email, I'm not asking you to buy anything. I might give you a link to go buy something. I'm not mad though if you don't click on it. In these episodes, I always mention something that you can do, but I'm not mad if you don't go do it. And many times you just listen to the episode and go to the next one, right? This is all part of the marketing. This is all part of the process. The opportunist in it is I'm just continually dripping on you. So when it gets to the moment that you are ready to take action, well, guess what? Here I am just like I was the day before, just like I will be tomorrow. And the day that you're ready to take action is not the same day that somebody else is ready to take action. So that's why I gotta always be present and available so when the person who is ready to take action today is ready, I'm there. All right, this show's been listened to over uh, five and a quarter million times in the history of the show. It doesn't mean every single listener is ready to take action on the same day. Somebody might be ready today, somebody else can be ready next week, somebody else can be ready in six months, somebody else can be ready next year. But I just gotta be there and available when they are ready. You get it? So this does not mean everybody you talk to becomes a customer magically just because you treated them like one. It just means if you treat people as if they are not customers, they will find good reasons to not be customers, even if they had an intention of becoming one before they came across you. So in other words, treating everybody like a buyer does not mean they're gonna become buyers, but it, if you don't treat them like buyers, it does mean you can turn them from a buyer into a non-buyer. So make sure your attitude and your approach is not costing you business because you're treating people like they won't do something even though they have every intention to do something. So let me say this as clearly as possible for everyone listening. If you are in the sales business, and that's everybody, 
You need to treat every person you meet as if they are a possible buyer for whatever it is that you are selling. Because even if they're not a buyer, they might know somebody who is a buyer. Did you ever think about that? Everybody knows somebody. And this is what opportunism is about. Finding and creating opportunities even when there appears to not be any opportunity. That's the mindset of an opportunist. A good salesperson is doing this naturally without even thinking about it. If you are not naturally thinking about this, then a few things you need to do. First of all, you need to read my book called The Seller's Mindset. Secondly, you need to go to my training at workonyourgame.net and get that training about getting to your next level financially without running yourself into the ground. And third, when you're inside of my university, you need to take my course called Selling Yourself. It's all about selling yourself, literally selling yourself because you can't sell a product until you sell people on yourself. So with that said, let's recap today's class, which is everybody is a buyer. I walk into a suit store and this is the one day a week I didn't have a suit on. These people don't know me and they treated me as if I would not buy anything. And guess what? I didn't buy anything. Point number one, everyone is a buyer until or unless they give you a reason that they are not. When you're a hammer, everyone is a nail. When you're a salesperson, everybody's a customer. So always treat people as if they can buy something, especially if your paycheck, your livelihood is based on selling things. Point number two, this is the owner versus the employee mindset. The owner would have talked to me completely different or dealt with me, period, completely differently than the no, salespeople who were working at this store that I walked in there because the owner understands how much it's costing him every single second that that store is open and the register is not ringing. So he would have treated every person in there as an opportunity to make that register ring. But the employees, they don't have the same mindset, generally speaking, because an employee can go get a job somewhere else if that one goes out of business. The owner doesn't have that luxury, so they gotta make it work where they are. This is the difference in mindset. And point number three, be an opportunist. An opportunist is the person who sees or creates opportunity in every situation, even when there appears to not be an opportunity. This is the marketing process. Understand that marketing does not mean you are always making a sale or consummating a transaction. Marketing is the relationship you continually build over time with people, even if they have not bought anything from you yet, or the last time they bought something from you was three years ago, they may eventually buy something from you in the future. And when you are you know, front facing and you're the person that people see, understand that people are always evaluating you, watching you, and you are building, you're nurturing a relationship, even when you don't know you're nurturing a relationship with people who you don't even know exist, but they know you exist. So every single thing that you do is either getting you closer or further away from that potential opportunity. This is the mindset of a salesperson. And by the way, everybody listening to me is a salesperson. You're either good at it or you're bad at it, but you cannot advocate from this job. All that said, text me to get my daily motivation free of charge every single day or every week or whenever we're sending it out. My number is 305-384-6894 and go to workonyourgame.net. That's where you can get my free training, how to go from the six-figure to the seven-figure level without running yourself into the ground in the process, even if you feel like you are already maxing out on effort and time. Yes, there is a way to do that. Go to workonyourgame.net, get the training, it's free of charge. Work on your game. Dre all day.